It's lunchtime, and this is Brad Anderson's lunch break. I get invited to attend tech events all the time in Las Vegas. And whenever I can, I like to make the quick trip from Redmond and meet with other tech leaders and learn about what they're doing. This week I speak with Microsoft Technical Fellow and the creator of PowerShell, the one and only Jeffrey Snover. Jeffrey, hey, that door weighs about two tons. Oh man, what have you got going here? 1971 Cadillac Eldorado. How you like it? The perfect car for Las Vegas. <laughs> exactly. Hunter right. S. Thompson car. <laughs> you got it. You got it. All right, get your seatbelt on. Back in 1971, they didn't have shoulder harnesses, so it's just around the waist. Well, hello. How you doing? <laughs> so, Jeffrey, I tell you, if there is somebody that's gone out to lunch with me on, on these, you know, who needs no introduction, like the first IT rock star, it's Jeffrey Snower, creator of PowerShell. I think the only person I've ever seen signing autographs <laughs> at an IT show. So tell me about, you know, tell me about what you do at Microsoft. I know that, but tell everybody else what you do. So I'm the chief architect for the Enterprise Cloud Group. So that's the team that brought us Windows Server, and Azure Stack, System Center, and Operations Management Suite. So all the cool stuff. There's like an urban legend of how you created PowerShell. Oh yeah? Right? Yeah. So what I heard is you were like trying to hang a picture over the toilet, you fell, hit your head, and came up with the idea. Is that true? It's not almost true. It's oh, almost you true. You know what? That, like, that, that's, that's Doc Brown from Back to the Future and the Flux Capacitor. Sorry. Oh, that's what it was. Sorry. All right, Jeff, we're going to play a game called This or That. Oh, my. I'm going to give you two seemingly different subjects, and then I'm going to list off an attribute. You're going to tell me which one it applies to. Okay. The two subjects are Las Vegas Convention Center <laughs> or an on premises data center. Okay. okay. First one is full of flashing lights that may or may not mean anything. <laughs> Ooh, that's sort of both. I'm going to go with data center. Okay, data center. Okay. It's unbelievably expensive to buy the whole thing, but unbelievably cheap to just rent a portion. Oh, that's definitely the data center. All right, that's, that's the, the cloud economics. Everything was going fine until Brian from Logistics filled his Mountain Dew on everything. <laughs> That's got to be the uh, convention center, because Brian should not be in the data center. There you go. That's exactly it. OK, there are slot machines in the bathroom. <laughs> I hope that's the convention center. Okay, most times of the year, a cloud would be welcome there. Uh, the data center. We talk as an industry about digital transformation. Yeah. And the, what you know, you're right in the middle of, of helping to drive a digital transformation as organizations are you know, really kind of moving on-prem up to the cloud. So what does doing cloud and mobility the right way look like for an organization going forward? Yeah, the first is, is you want to focus in on the things that drive your business forward. Now, this shows up in lots of different ways. You know, a lot of people talk about DevOps, yep. and I go to a lot of DevOps conferences, and there's a lot of conversations about, well, what is DevOps? Nobody ever walks away from those conversations saying, oh, I got it. <laughs> now, to me, DevOps is very simple. It's basically saying, I'm going to put the customer and the customer value proposition at the center of everything, and I'm going to re-engineer everything I do in order to advance that, to optimize for that. And so that's really what this, to me, what the cloud transformation is all about. It's about saying, hey, I am going to build the things that differentiate me and drive customer value, and then buy the things that don't. Okay. Okay. So that's why I'm actually not a fan of OpenStack, right? Because at first, very few people are successful with OpenStack. Those who are, you ask one simple question. How many engineers do you have working on OpenStack? And the answer is, anyone who's successful, it's a very large number, and typically it's a growing. Well, and they're trying to get it all together. Yeah. They're doing the systems integration. And these teams that have you know, open source software developers contributing code to software-defined networking and blah, blah, blah. And my simple question to them is, how does that help you put more people in an airplane? Yeah. How does that help you? How does having an open source developer on software defined networking help you sell more shoes? Right. Right? More profitable, delight your customers more. How does that help? Zero. Mission? None. And so the you know the Turks have this great phrase, and they say when you find out you're on the wrong road, turn back. No matter how much progress you've <laughs> sure. made. And I think a lot of folks in OpenStack are kind of coming to that realization. Is it like, oh, okay, so I'm sort of making progress here. But what the heck am I doing? Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm trying to sell airplane seats or shoes or cars, and I got all these people who are open source. That makes no sense, and they shouldn't be doing that. 
they should buy that stuff because it doesn't help drive their value proposition. So what's key and fundamental? Uh, buy everything else. I mean, build what is, what is key and fundamental to you, you got differentiate it. on your mission, Yeah. buy or lease everything else. Yeah, and that's why it's the transformation. Yeah, it is a fundamentally different shift in how, how people should be thinking about it. Yeah. When I see Jeffrey, whether it's in the halls or whether it's in sta on the stage, I can almost guarantee I'm gonna see a couple of things. A gray tie and footwear. <laughs> the footwear I use the uh, Veeble and Five Fingers, so. You've been this for years, like a decade. Yeah. yeah You're the first person I think I ever saw in them. Yeah, so you know, at some point I've been doing a lot of running and I kept injuring myself. And so I heard about this barefoot running and these fever and five fingers that you know would help uh, you know de decrease uh, running injuries. So I did two things, and uh, my running injury stopped. I started wearing these, and I stopped running. And miraculously, <laughs> my running injuries just just went away. So since then, I've been a huge fan of them. <laughs> Next time on Brad Anderson's Lunch Break. You ever been on vacation somewhere, you know, and, and someone finds out, oh, this is Jeffrey who created PowerShell? <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, yes. Okay, so what's that like? <laughs> okay, so think back on your 17 years. Hmm? What would be like the missed opportunity you think, you think back and you go like, man, I should have done that.